Hello fellow entrepreneurs! Welcome to my channel where I read and summarize books relating to being a better entrepreneur. I met no one who I thought was wise who didn't read. I believe reading is essential for those who seek to rise above the ordinary. So today, we will be learning from Jim Collins' book, Built to Last. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Through their long-term success, visionary businesses can teach us a lot. They are companies that have a long history of success and are widely regarded as the crown jewels of their respective industries. Furthermore, their success is long-term. They thrive even as great leaders leave and individual hit products fade away. To study and learn from these companies properly, Jim Collins had to first identify them by pulling hundreds of prominent CEOs for the names of companies they considered visionary. The study included the 18 most frequently mentioned companies, including such names as the Walt Disney Company, Marriott Hotels, and Merck. The visionary firms were then paired with comparison firms, which had similar products and markets but, while not necessarily poor performers, were referred to as visionary far less frequently in the CEO survey. Both groups of companies were then examined over the course of their long lives. The average founding date lay in the 1890s for both groups. All aspects of these corporations were studied, from their ownership structures to their cultures, using massive amounts of data gathered from interviews, annual reports, financial statements, news articles, and other sources. Part 1. Key to Long-Term Success Consider this. A dollar invested in the visionary companies in 1926 would have grown to $6,356 in 1990. When you compare this to the performance of the comparison companies, which was $955, and the general market, which was only $415, you can see how impressive the visionary companies' performance is. It's no surprise that the findings of this study have piqued the interest of Fortune 500 companies. Through their long-term success, visionary businesses can teach us. Companies with a vision are like machines that produce great products and leaders on a regular basis. Contrary to popular belief, a visionary company's success is not contingent on great ideas. Sony's founder, for example, had no idea what products his company would produce. After forming the company, he held a brainstorming session to evaluate business ideas ranging from sweetened bean paste to miniature golf equipment. When Bill Hewlett and David Packard founded Hewlett Packard, they didn't have a specific idea in mind, HP. They tried out a wide range of ideas, including automatic urinal flushers and bowling foul line indicators. As a result, it appears that great ideas aren't required to start a visionary company. High profile, charismatic leaders aren't any better. While visionary companies did have outstanding leaders, they were frequently down to earth, reserved, and modest individuals. But then, what is the key to long term success? Despite the fact that many comparison companies had great ideas and strong leadership, they all eventually fell behind the visionary companies. Why? Rather than focusing on a single product or a single leader, the visionary companies that were studied evolved into exceptional organizations that consistently produced great ideas and great leaders. The true product of the founders was the company itself, which was constantly evolving independently of any one person or idea. Consider a clock on a wall. Getting a glimpse of that clock and being able to tell the time in an instant is like having one great idea or visionary leader. Building an organization that consistently produces great ideas and leaders, on the other hand, is akin to making your own clock, a dependable machine. Companies with a vision are like machines that produce great products and leaders on a regular basis. Visionary businesses are motivated by a core ideology rather than profits, but they still thrive. Part 2. Visionary businesses are motivated by a core ideology, not profits. Visionary businesses exist for a reason other than to make money. This purpose, along with the company's core values, enduring tenets that guide every decision, forms the company's core ideologies, a set of stable principles that guide the company through generations, similar to the truths of the American Declaration of Independence. Take, for example, Johnson & Johnson, a pharmaceutical company, J&J. &J. The company's core ideology was written out in a document called Our Credo in 1935, which listed the company's responsibilities first to the customers, second to their employees, and so on. Finally, fifth and last on the list, Johnson stated that shareholders should receive a fair return after all other responsibilities have been met. Similarly, the majority of the visionary companies studied were not primarily focused on profit. Nonetheless, while some ideologies may appear soft or idealistic, visionary businesses have found a way to be pragmatic in their business decisions and make profits without compromising their core beliefs. A core ideology is critical not only when visionary businesses succeed, 
but also when they faced challenges. Instead of putting out fires in the 1980s, when Ford faced a dire crisis, its management team paused to discuss and clarify what the company stood for and how they could embody the values of its founder, Henry Ford. General Motors, Ford's competitor, made no such effort. Despite the fact that every visionary company studied had a core ideology, the content of those ideologies varied greatly. What matters is that an authentic ideology exists and is rigorously implemented, not the content of the ideology. Part 3. Visionary businesses stick to their core values and push for progress and improvement. While visionary companies jealously guard the permanence of their core ideologies, the manifestations of those ideologies are always open to change and progress. For example, Walmart committed to exceed customer expectations is a constant part of its core philosophy, but the presence of customer greeters at store entrances is a practice that can change. Similarly, Boeing's core ideology is to be an aviation pioneer, but building jumbo jets is a manifestation of that ideology that can change. This adaptability exemplifies how forward-thinking companies defy the so-called tyranny of the or, in which a company must choose between staying true to its core ideology and promoting progress. Instead, visionary businesses employ the ands genius, experimenting and developing while remaining true to their core ideologies. Visionary businesses are guided by their core ideologies, but they are also relentless in their efforts to improve their products, services, and operations. They never get comfortable or complacent. Consider J. Willard Marriott, the company's founder, who lived by the motto, keep on being constructive, doing constructive things, until it's time to die. Make every day count until it's time to die. This may sound depressing, but it also represents a strong commitment to continuous improvement. This drive for progress, like their core ideologies, is innate and unquestionably in visionary businesses. Setting bold goals and putting in place concrete mechanisms that encourage people to innovate and improve both help to accelerate progress. Part 4. Set Big Audacious Goals Visionary companies frequently set themselves extremely ambitious goals, so-called Big Hairy Audacious Goals, BHAGs, to which they devote themselves completely. Because BHAGs are so ambitious, they can appear unrealistic to outsiders. They are, however, distinct and concrete enough to energize and focus the organization. The one set by John F. Kennedy in 1961, when he declared that the United States would send a man to the moon and back safely by the end of the decade, is a well-known example of a non-corporate BHAG. This was an almost absurdly bold commitment at the time, but it did get the United States moving forward. Throughout its history, Boeing had set many BHAGs, including its commitment to developing the 747 jet. Boeing was single-minded in its pursuit of this goal, never considering the possibility of failure. The CEO stated that they would finish the jet even if it consumed the entire company, which it nearly did. At one point, roughly 86,000 people, roughly 60% of their workforce, were laid off because plane sales fell short of expectations. Similarly, Thomas J. Watson Sr., the founder of the Computer Tabulating Recording Company, set a BHAG by renaming his business which sold coffee grinders and butcher scales to reflect his desire for global prominence. At the time, the new name was bold, International Business Machines, IBM. BHAGs have a habit of taking on lives of their own. The visionary companies pursued their BHAGs, even as new CEOs and directors came and went, just as the space program did after Kennedy's death. Once a BHAG was met, new ones were established, always in keeping with the company's core values. Part five, culture sets the standard. New recruits either thrive or leave visionary organizations, which are almost cult-like in nature. Visionary companies are so dedicated to their core ideologies that their corporate cultures are almost cult-like. New employees, for example, quickly learn to socialize primarily with their co-workers, and they are encouraged to keep the inner workings of their companies a secret. Employees are frequently completely immersed in the company's core philosophy. Consider IBM, where future managers and training would rise and perform songs from an IBM songbook. March on with IBM, march on with IBM, march on with IBM, march! Similarly, the Walt Disney Company expected its employees to embody the company's core values of wholesome family fun. Men with facial hair, for example, were not allowed to work at theme parks, and anyone caught saying a four-letter word in front of Walt Disney was fired immediately, no exceptions. People who do not meet the visionary company's high expectations and standards do not have a lot of room. New employees frequently find themselves in one of two situations. Either they fit in well and thrive, or they perform poorly, are unhappy, and leave the company quickly. 
At Visionary Companies, there are no compromises in this area. Employees, on the other hand, can be given leeway to experiment because they are confident and can be counted on to adhere to the company's core ideology. This promotes progress and allows the company to avoid the perils of groupthink, which are common in many cults. However, visionary businesses are not personality cults centered on a charismatic CEO or founder, but rather on the company's core ideology. Though charismatic personalities can inspire people to work hard, such cults invariably disband once the person has left. New recruits either thrive or leave visionary organizations, which are almost cult-like in nature. Companies with a vision produce a steady stream of high-caliber leaders. Part 6. A company's vision creates great leaders. While many of the visionary companies studied had outstanding CEOs at various times, what was even more impressive was their ability to consistently produce such high-quality leaders. The organizations worked hard to develop managerial talent within the organization so that new leaders could be counted on to uphold the company's core values. At the same time, forward-thinking companies engaged in proactive succession planning to ensure leadership continuity, even if something unexpected occurred. Consider the General Electric Company, GE, whose most well-known CEO is unquestionably the legendary Jack Welch. GE, on the other hand, has had a century of Welch-caliber CEOs thanks to the company's strong emphasis on internal management training and CEO succession. In fact, more GE alumni have gone on to become CEOs of American companies than any other company's alumni. And Welch laid out his succession plan seven years before stepping down, though even this seems rushed in comparison to Bob Galvin, the former CEO of Motorola, who began planning for the next generation a quarter century before stepping down. The comparison companies, on the other hand, frequently hired external CEOs who were unfamiliar with the company and who occasionally began steering it in new, wholly ill-conceived directions. Furthermore, CEOs at comparison companies were frequently near tyrannical and engaged in little succession planning, leaving gaping leadership holes when they left. Some comparison firms had CEOs who actively thwarted succession planning and sabotaged potential successors. When the thorny CEO finally stepped down, the company suffered a setback. Part 7. Encourage Experimentation by encouraging experimentation, forward-thinking businesses promote evolutionary progress. Evolution, according to Charles Darwin, is a series of successful experiments in which minor variations are introduced to a species and only the strongest new variants survive. Similarly, the visionary businesses studied recognize the importance of encouraging similar evolutionary progress within their organizations. They encourage their employees and management to try out new ideas, products, and procedures, with some of them proving to be huge successes. Take, for example, J&J's well-known Band-Aids. They were created when a co-worker used surgical tape and gauze to quickly bandage his wife's fingers after she cut herself with a kitchen knife. When he pitched the idea to J&J's marketing department, they were enthusiastic, and Band-Aid products eventually became the company's best-selling category. Consider 3M, which instructed its employees to devote 15% of their work time to any personal projects they desired. Two separate employee projects eventually collided to create the famous Post-it notes. This would never have happened if 3M had not actively encouraged experimentation and allowed its employees to keep working on their pet projects even after initial market studies were negative. In contrast, 3M's comparison company, Norton, actively discouraged employees from exploring opportunities outside of the company's traditional product lines. Some, if not all, variations of an organism fail in evolution. The same is true in business. J&J had some notable failures as well, such as its colored casts for children with bone fractures. The casts quickly transformed hospital bed sheets into modern art and wreaked havoc on hospital laundries. Companies with foresight realize that failed experiments are a necessary cost of evolution and should not be penalized, lest further experimentation be discouraged. By encouraging experimentation, forward-thinking businesses promote evolutionary progress. Visionary businesses don't just talk about their values, they put them into action. While many companies claim to follow idealistic values, encourage experimentation, and embrace constant progress, little evidence of this can be found in practice. On the other hand, the visionary companies studied were able to translate their values into reality by establishing concrete mechanisms that influenced employees' daily lives and decisions. We want our employees to be more innovative, 3M did not simply say. Instead, it put in place a number of mechanisms to encourage this idea, including allowing employees to spend 15% of their time on personal projects and requiring that 30% of each division's annual sales come from products that are less than four years old. Similarly, visionary businesses did not simply talk about continuous improvement. 
they built mechanisms to ensure it. Walmart, for example, fueled consistent growth with so-called beat yesterday's ledgers, which compared each day's sales to the previous years. Similarly, Hewlett Packard instituted a grueling annual ranking process for its employees to prevent those who had achieved high status from coasting. In the long run, the visionary companies also took concrete actions. They put far more money into developing new technologies and business practices, training and developing their human capital, and supporting research and development than comparison companies. For example, when Merck wanted to become a major player in medical research, it designed its labs to look like academic ones and allowed its researchers to publish their findings in academic journals, which was unusual at the time for a private company. It also decided that, unlike many other companies, research should drive the product development process rather than marketing. Merck's laboratories attracted top scientists as a result of this. Visionary companies achieve phenomenal success by remaining true to their core ideologies while pursuing progress relentlessly. A company's core ideology includes not only its core values, but also its purpose, or why it exists in the first place, aside from profits or shareholder value. Visionary companies, in addition to their core ideology, encourage constant progress by setting ambitious goals and putting in place grassroots mechanisms to carry out their policies. This wraps up the summary from the book, Built to Last by Jim Collins. Thank you for sticking it out through the very end of this video. Nothing helps out my channel more than y'all watching the entire video. These videos take a long time to make and is a labor of love. If you would like to contribute by buying me a cup of coffee, I'll leave the link below along with a link to this book. And as always, if you'd like this video, please like and subscribe and watch these videos that might pique your interest. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, keep reading.